everyone, welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a Cyprian classic dessert known as Zaktila Kirion. It comes from the island of Cyprus, like we just said before. And um, it's a very simple and basic recipe. If you like Viples, the Cretan dessert that I taught a little while back, you're going to love these because it, they're kind of like um, filled little Viples. It's a Siropiesto dessert, which means that it's dipped in syrup after it's fried. It's very basic, very simple. Perfect for entertaining because it makes a really, really big batch with very inexpensive ingredients. Let's go over the ingredients that we're going to use to make the dough first because that's step one and then we're going to move on. So we have some eggs, a little bit of vanilla extract, some olive oil, a little bit of sugar. We're going to use the zest and some juice of an orange. You could do a lemon instead if you'd like some baking powder, a little bit of salt, and all-purpose flour. So in my mixing bowl over here, I have the dry ingredients, which are, is, which are some all-purpose flour, a little bit of baking powder, and some salt. And I'm just going to whisk these together just until they're combined. Very simple. Now we're going to combine our wet ingredients. So in the mixing bowl, I have the eggs. I'm going to add just a little bit of sugar. This is a siropiesto dessert, like I said, which means it's going to be dipped in a syrup after it's made. So you don't want to add too, sweetness, too much sweetness to the dough. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here. A couple of tablespoons will do. And some vanilla extract. Now you can do vanilla extract, you can do orange blossom water, or even some rose water. And then we're going to need a quarter cup of the orange, orange's juice. But since we're going to need the zest also, get rid of that shiny exterior. That's the zest. If you get to the white, then you stop because the white part is bitter. That looks good. We're just going to set this aside. Now we're just going to juice. Probably half of this orange will give us um, a quarter cup of juice. But not today. Today it looks like we're going to use almost the whole thing. We use the whole thing today. So I'm just going to get rid of the seeds very simply. Since we needed just this small amount of juice, I didn't feel like dirtying one more thing and taking out a citrus, uh, citrus juicer. So I just did it by hand. But if you got somebody else washing the dishes and you don't care about cleanup, go ahead and juice this over a citrus juicer. Mix it with our wet ingredients. And I'm just going to whisk this all together. Now I'm using my tabletop mixer, but you can do this whole thing by hand. It's just going to take a little bit of extra time to knead it all together. And then we're going to add the dry ingredients in here. I'm going to put it onto my mixer and attach uh, the kneading hook. And now we're just going to let this knead until it all comes together and forms a dough. It's just going to take a couple of minutes. So once the dough comes together, then you can just stop kneading it, take it out, and we're going to transfer it into a bowl. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of oil into this bowl because we're going to have, that was a little too much oil, put a little less in that. You just want it to, you just want to put just a tablespoon or so of oil in there. That's all you need. Just transfer the dough in there and just coat it all around. And then we're going to cover this with plastic wrap and set it aside for an hour or two so it can rest, and then we're going to roll it all out. But I'm going to set this aside, clean up, and then we're going to move on to making the syrup. So now we're going to move on to making the syrup, and the syrup is very simple as always. We're going to need a little bit of granulated sugar, some juice of an orange, you can use a, the juice of a lemon as well, a cinnamon stick, some water, and some pure vanilla extract. Now again, I'm going to use pure vanilla extract in the end, but it's more common to use orange blossom water. You can even use rose water or whatever extract you like. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of orange juice in here. Just a couple tablespoons will do. Put the cinnamon stick in here and the vanilla. And then I'm going to put it over the heat and let it come to a boil. Once it boils, just give it a stir, and as soon as um, the sugar is dissolved, we're going to move it off the heat and add the vanilla extract. So the syrup is, the syrup is ready. It's going to have to cool down a, a little bit, so we're going to set it aside, and now we're going to make the filling. And the filling is very simple. All I have are some ground-up toasted almonds, some uh, granulated sugar, and some ground cinnamon. Now you can use any nuts that you like. You can use ground-up pistachios, ground-up walnuts, or any combination of nuts that you have on hand or that you like. I like to use toasted almonds in this. So again, toasting them, they're just whole almonds that I've toasted in the oven 
for about eight minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, just until they started to smell really nice. Then I just took them out, allowed them to cool, and then I just ground them up until they were finely chopped. Now I'm just gonna co uh, combine everything together, just like this, and just mix it all up. And the filling is ready. We're just gonna set this aside. And now we're gonna move on to making our, um, rolling out our dough. So now it's time to roll out the dough. Now you can definitely do this by hand with a rolling pin, but if you have a KitchenAid mixer, it is a good thing to invest in one of these pasta rollers. They just attach to the mixer and then it does all the work for you. My mom rolls it out by hand, but I don't think I'm that um, patient, but you can definitely do it. Now I'm gonna cut this into six equal pieces. So cut it in half and then cut each piece into three equal pieces or as equal as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then just dust each piece in the flour and just set it aside. So now you just wanna take one piece at a time and just pat it down as flat as you can. Something in the shape of a rectangle. And then we're gonna move on to rolling it out with our um, pasta roller. So you just wanna make sure that there's enough flour in this so that way the dough does not stick. And we're gonna pass it through the first setting and just thin it out easily. Each time it comes out, just put a little bit of flour on top. Pass it through one, one more time. Now I'm gonna thin it out to two. And then I'll move it to three. And I'll take it up one more notch to four. I think that'll get it to the perfect thickness. So the first one is ready. So now I'm just gonna cover the dough balls with a clean kitchen towel so we can work with one strip at a time. You wanna make a nice little um, workstation over here with a little bit of water and a pastry brush, your strip of dough and a tray either lined with parchment paper or with a kitchen towel that's lightly floured. Now we're just gonna take a little bit of the filling. About a half teaspoon is what I'm using. Half teaspoon is good. And we're just gonna roll it over the filling. We're gonna put it right at the edge. Then we're gonna take just a tiny bit of water and we're gonna put it in between, roll it over, press it down, and then either with a knife or a pastry cutter, we're just gonna cut this little pastry, on the pastry out like that, and we're gonna set it aside. And I'm gonna keep going until the strip is finished. So we're gonna put a half teaspoon of the filling, we're gonna roll over, brush it gently with some water, that's gonna help it seal. Roll it over one more time and cut it out. And then we're just gonna set it aside. And I'm gonna keep doing this until this whole strip of dough is done. So this strip of dough made about seven and that's around how many each one is gonna make. Again, it just depends on how evenly you um, cut the dough pieces out. So now for, with each one of these little pastries, I'm just gonna seal the tips with a fork it also makes a decorative design at the edge and it's gonna keep them nice and sealed when we fry. And then I'm just gonna transfer them onto my baking tray. So you wanna take any leftover little pieces and just put them on the smaller little uh, portions of dough that you've already cut. Now I'm just gonna continue rolling these out and filling them until they're all done. You don't have to make them all at once. You don't have to roll them all out. This can stay fresh in the refrigerator for a couple of days and you could just make a little bit at a time. Or you could just make these all and then freeze them and fry them whenever you're ready to use them. So I'm gonna continue doing this and I'm gonna, then we're gonna move on to frying them as soon as I'm done. So I, I'm only making half a batch today and I'm gonna save the remaining three portions of dough in um, a, plastic wrap and I'm going to store it in my refrigerator. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to give you a few tips while we're waiting for our oil to heat up. So I have some flavorless vegetable oil in a pan over here. I like to fry things um, in cast iron as often as possible. So I have a cast iron enamel coated 
frying pan, but you can use a pot too to do this, like a saucepan or something, something deep. You want the oil to come to about 375 degrees Fahrenheit, so that way everything fries to a golden perfection and doesn't get burned. Use any flavorless vegetable oil that you can get. Now, let me tell you about the setup over here. So you're going to want to have a tray or a plate lined with some uh, paper towel to catch the excess oil that's going to be left on the pastries after they're fried. You want to have your cooled syrup right uh, nearby because we're going to dunk them in once that's done. And let me just talk a little bit about the pastries. So when you're looking at the length, what length to make these, you want to make them about the size of the finger. So if the pastry is rolled out a little bit too wide, then trim it a little bit so that way they're not too long or cut them in half once you start making them. So while you're sealing the edges and the fork starts to get stuck on the dough, this is a very delicate dough, you can dip the fork in some flour and continue to do that. It's really simple. Try not to make them too long so that way they hold their shape. Don't use too much water when you're sealing them, otherwise the dough is going to turn into glue and trust me, you don't want that. Just a tiny bit of water, enough to seal them when you're rolling it, to seal the filling in. Basically, that's it. I made a bunch over here. That's all we need today because if I make them all, we're going to eat them all. So we don't need to do that. You don't need to eat that much of this dessert. So I'm going to take my thermometer out and then I'm going to start frying because the temperature, it has, it has come to the right temperature. I'm going to put them in a few at a time and they're just going to uh, fry just until they're nice and golden all around. That just takes a few minutes. So once one side becomes golden, go ahead and try to flip them over so they can get golden all around. And then we're going to take them out. Then we're going to take them out and put them on our paper. And then we're just going to dunk them into the syrup a few at a time. So you can get nice and sweet. Now you want to make sure the syrup is cool. Anytime you're making a syrupy Greek pastry, if the pastry is hot, the syrup should be cool. That way the pastry stays nice and crisp. And they don't need too much time in here. Just roll them around and then take them out and put them on your serving tray. And you keep doing that until you're done frying all of your pastries. So what I love about this dessert is that it makes a huge batch for a very small amount of money. So it's perfect for entertaining, especially when you're hosting a party. The only thing is, the good thing is, is that you could prepare the whole thing ahead of time, but it is best to fry them right before you serve them so they're nice and crisp and syrupy and not soggy because as you know, fried things taste best as soon as they're made. I need to try one. I need to taste one because they're just smelling delicious and they look good. I'm going to go in and give it a taste. I like this one that has all the air pockets and the air bubbles on it. Let me go in and give it a taste. Mm. Perfect, perfectly crisp on the outside. The filling is just the right amount. You guys are going to love these. Make a hot cup of coffee and enjoy them. Call some friends over and just make these. The recipe is on the website, www.demetriusdishes.com. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss a recipe because there's a lot more goodness where this came from. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.